So Java provides four kinds of thread pools. First is a fixed thread pool, which we saw earlier. Second is a cached thread pool. Third is scheduled thread pool. And fourth is single threaded executor. So first one, the fixed thread pool, is exactly the one that we saw earlier, wherein it has fixed number of threads, which in this case is T0 to T9, so 10 threads, and you keep submitting the tasks to it. All the tasks that you submit are stored in a particular queue. That queue has to be thread safe, so typically it's a blocking queue. And all these threads will fetch tasks from the queue and execute it one after the other. And the code for it is also what we saw earlier. You do executors.new fixed thread pool, you give it the size of the pool, and you submit the tasks using the for loop or otherwise. The next type of thread pool is slightly different. Here, you do not have a fixed number of threads. And you also do not have a queue which will hold the number of tasks that you submit. Instead, the queue is replaced by something called synchronous queue, which has only space for a single item. So every time you submit a particular task, the pool will hold that task in this location and it will search for any of the threads which are already created and which are free to operate or execute that task. If no such thread is available, then it will create a new thread, it will add it to the pool and it will ask that thread to execute the task. So now you can imagine, so instead of 10, we have 100 tasks. Instead of 100, if we have 1000 tasks, then theoretically all 10 threads will be busy when the 11th task is submitted. So that's when it will create T10, which is the 11th thread and so on and so forth until T999. So theoretically, it can create 1000 threads to execute all the tasks. So since that's too many threads, cache thread pool also has the ability to kill those threads once they have been idle for more than 60 seconds. So if a thread is no longer required, if there are no other tasks that are coming in, then this thread pool will kill those threads. So that's when your thread pool size will slowly start shrinking. And the code for that is very similar to fixed size thread pool, but instead you do not pass in an argument for the threads. So the, the method call is executors.new cache thread pool and it doesn't take any arguments because you are not in control of number of threads that it creates. And the task submission remains the same. The third kind of thread pool is called scheduled thread pool. Here, it is specifically for the kind of tasks that you want to schedule after a certain delay. Okay, so let's say you want to perform some kind of checks, security checks, logging checks, or some kind of checks after every 10 seconds. You can use these calls of this service dot schedule and you can give it a delay of say 10 seconds. Or if you want to perform some checks every 10 seconds, you can use the method schedule at a fixed rate of 10 seconds what it does is it will store all the tasks that you submit in the queue but that queue is a delay queue it's a special kind of queue wherein the tasks may, might not remain sequential the tasks will be distributed based on when the task needs to be executed so if you submit two kind of tasks to this thread pool one task should run after 10 seconds, other tasks should run after 10 minutes. Then the 10 seconds task will come at the front and the 10 minutes one will be next to that. So there are three kinds of methods that you can trigger. You can have one off task, which you can trigger after a certain delay, which is the first method. You can have a task which ca it can keep triggering after a certain time, say every 10 seconds. And you can also say run the tasks 10 seconds after the previous instance has run. So suppose your task itself takes 15 seconds. So you cannot say run my task at every 10 seconds. So here when you say fix delay what it will do is it will complete the task which takes 15 seconds and after that 
it will wait for 10 seconds and schedule the next instance of the task right and the code for that is you create a new scheduled thread pool you have to give it some pool size so here we've used 10 and you have one task which is one off task to be run only once but after a delay of 10 seconds so you say service.schedule pass in the task instance and you say i want to run it after 10 seconds the next method is for a task that you want to run after every 10 seconds so here you can say schedule at a fixed rate you pass in the task and you say wait for 15 seconds before you start running this so it will wait first time it will wait for 15 seconds it will trigger the task and after that every 10 seconds it will run the task the third is scheduled with a fixed delay which again waits for 15 seconds it will schedule a task it will wait for that task to complete no matter how much amount it takes after that task is complete then it will wait for 10 seconds and again trigger the task again it will wait for the task to complete and then it will wait 10 more seconds and then schedule the task right the fourth and the final type of executor is a single threaded executor it is exactly the same as fixed thread pool executor but in this case the size of the pool is only one so you have only one thread which is fetching all the tasks from the clocking queue and running it and in this case if the task throws an exception and the thread is killed like any other thread pool executor it will recreate that thread right so every time even if your thread is killed the thread pool will ensure that it recreates a new thread and your tasks are not stopped this particular type of thread pool is used when you want to ensure that task one is always run before task two and task two is always run before task three so since there is only one thread which is executing all these tasks you can ensure that these tasks will be run sequentially and that is not true in case the pool size is more than one so in earlier cases when we had the pool size of 10 there can be 10 threads all 10 of them can be executing 10 tasks simultaneously so you're not sure when task 1 completes or when task 4 completes but in this case since there is only one thread you are ensured that tasks are run sequentially so that's it these are the four types of thread pools that executor service provides and in next video we'll see how to use directly the constructor and tweak the parameters of thread pool executor